All right, folks, first time back on the water fishing in almost two months. It has been, uh, it's been seven, approaching eight weeks. I pretty much took off October, November for deer hunting. Uh, I'm big into that. My son's a little bit older now. He loves to hunt. He's as eat up with it at his age as I was. And uh, so, yeah, he's wanting to hunt a bunch, so I'm all for it. So supporting that going. He killed a whopper out in Kentucky this year uh, he I, I killed one a few days later I'll have a video out about that soon that's a heck of a story the way it unfolded but it's back to fishing so heading out today gonna try to put some bait in the boat gonna try to catch some perch catch some crappie do a little bit of looking I'm gonna be out fishing the rest of the week and uh, just trying to figure out what's going on where the fish are what's happening and uh, see if uh, see if we can catch some fish Yeah, guys, this is one of them trips uh, where I kind of worked the kinks out of the system. After fishing pretty much daily for 10 months out of the year, and then you take two months off, you kind of get out of uh, your, your your flow. Uh, I always tell my son that before we start deer hunting. I always say we need one deer hunting trip just to make sure uh, we know what we're doing and see what all we forgot. Uh, and that's kind of the way it goes on a trip like this. I'll get out there. Today's a good day. To kind of go through the loop, go through the system, see what you've got, and see what you still remember how to do. All right, guys, we're hooked into something here. See what we got. Where's fish of the day? It's not feel huge, but we're happy to have it. That would be. A very non-aggressive perch. I am. I say non-aggressive because that fish did not hit it like a freight train like these things are notorious for doing. Good sized bait fish. I'll throw him in the live well. One of the things that bothered me about this creek was the short strikes. Uh, I had a lot of fish that were just hitting baits and not really hammering it. And this was killing my enthusiasm. Alright, got one to pop finally. <clears throat> and it would be another not all that aggressive perch. I say not aggressive. These things are not hitting like they normally do. Little small groups are barely popping the baits. But we're happy to have them. Put them in a live well. Every bait counts. Now, I worked this creek for about an hour. Uh, I picked off a few fish, but man, the fish were just not aggressive. So I decided to pull out to a main lake brush pile and see if the fishing was any better there. Boom, found this one. Found this one. Got out of that creek, decided to come out here on a brush pile and see if there's any of these suckers that eating. There's one. He'll make the cut. Now this brush pile had fish on it. I managed to catch a couple. The problem was all of the fish were on the bottom underneath the brush. I could mark them, I could see them, and getting to them and fishing them was gonna take more patience than I had daylight. So I decided to head down the lake and give a main lake point a try. Guys, I just rolled up here and dropped baits in a new place and just got one rod in the water and I got hit. Boom. Here we go. Little different setup, main lake point, and I'm hooked up on one right away. Let's see if there's some more in here. I don't know if I'm on to something. Here's the rig real quick. Little double hook deal. Got me some little octopus J hooks on here. Sinker on the bottom. Couple of hooks above it. I've got some video showing how I tie this rig. It's pretty simple. I got braided line. I got fish underneath. I just turned around and looked at the sonar for the first time. This could turn into a catch fest real quick. There's a good many fish on the uh, sonar. Let's see what happens, whether they want the boat moving or not moving. Like I said, this could get busy real quick. The boat was moving a minute ago when I dropped those baits in the water. You've heard me say it before. Sometimes these fish 
want these baits moving. There it goes. It's getting hit. Pop, pop. Oh, missed him, missed him, missed him. As soon as I turned that motor on, it got hit. I don't know if it's the boat or the motor, to be perfectly honest. Conventional wisdom would tell you that motor should scare the fish. But there are times when that seems to be the common denominator is that that trolling motor is on. Does it make a difference? Is it a vibration they're going for? I don't know. But we put two in the boat right quick. One, the boat was moving. One, the motor was on, so I don't know. Let's get them baited back up and find out. I'd like to put a few of these in the boat. Like I said, I'm planning to be out here fishing the next several days. And uh, I'd like to have plenty of bait. Tis the season for fishing bigger baits for catfish. So having some of these full-size perch is a good thing. There's a lot of fish on the sonar right now. We're going to see if they need the motor on or not to bite. We're going to try some. If I can get this one in without getting bit on this rod, I'm going to turn the motor on. See if it makes a difference. There, boom, that one's already getting hit. That one's got, I'm dropping my minnows in the water. Come on. Oh, he fell on the boat. That's a good thing. My ham hands here. Maybe if I let that one sit there for a second. I'm sitting here trying to do 12 things at once is what my problem is. Got that one. Get him up here and look at him. Flip the bail on that one. Boom. There we go. We got us a perch. Much better bite in here than what we were seeing back in those creeks, even though I was marking fish. Rehook this one. This old perch may die on me. If he dies, he's getting a knife. Get him in there. Get a couple of these minnows off the ground here. Supply chain issues are cutting down on my minnows. It's hard to get them. I think fishing's been good too, so I think that's why that one's flipping over there. I'm gonna put that old bloodied one back on there. I got a feeling, don't let them get knotted up like that. I got a feeling I can catch some more. Yeah, it's a good stack of them. Uh, it's amazing the difference <laughs> in the bite. I rolled up on a place, a tree, trying to find some crappie that were biting in there. That one's already going there too. Doubles on this one. Problem was this crappie were way underneath the tree. And uh, while you can catch them that way, it takes a little more patience than I've got with 30 minutes of sun left. So I figured I would try for some. Oh, that's a, a mongo perch there, boys. That is a that's a normal common size one. This other one. It's a big one. He's a sandwich size. Pop that out of his throat there. It's a big one. His bait's back in the water. I said at this point, with that many fish stacked up, I probably need to take one of these and cut the sides off of him and fillet him. Uh, generally, that's what I tell people to do with these things is... Uh, once you get several in the boat, put this one down here and put him to use, and you get them stacked up like this, you're better off taking a mortally wounded one and putting some of his fillet on the hook because they're, uh, they're usually frenzied up pretty good. I use the minnows, like I said, when you have to find them and you have to catch them. They work really as hard to catch crappie on a uh, on, uh, cut cut bait i've caught them on it it's hard but it's great to have them for that and it's great for having finding white perch that are not biting not active but these fish are active look at that that one's going right there uh i'll try to get a minnow on this one i may just go with single minnows here uh like i was saying earlier 
the ones I was catching when I started were not active fish. They were a real lethargic bite. And uh, you catch enough of these, when you have to work and work and work for them, they're not biting good. When you do what I just did, and there goes that one. You can see that one going down. This is an active bite. These fish are feeding. They're notorious for doing this right at sunset. Uh, they'll do it early, early mornings. Uh, these things will, depending on what the bait's doing, get on top of the water and blow up like white bass or stripers. Uh, sometimes you can see them up on top of the water. So, like I said, when they're like this, it's good fishing. And you need nothing but cut bait. So I'm kind of going back here to just putting on a single minnow on these because I really don't need multiple minnows on here. Usually one of them gets busted off in the process. Maybe I can keep one on here. Boom. We do have one that looks like he may be a volunteer back there, ready to die. But I just luckily pulled up and parked on these things, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I was rolling up onto a point where I stopped the boat. There were not that many fish. Uh, of course, I could have scattered those with the boat when I pulled up here, dropped the trolling motor, and was just getting ready to get bait in the water, and poof, uh, got bit. So they're still there, still on the screen check a bait well that's probably why i ain't catching that on that one i ain't got no uh got no bait i ain't the best fisherman in the world but when you got bait it helps and you get off these fish too uh you'll be on them for a minute catch them catch them catch them and if that school is moving around and moving around this point feeding on different things uh, you can get off of them uh, not to mention if you got, you know, a little bit of wind here. I barely have any wind moving me, but just don't take much drift. You drift away from them. So sometimes they're just thick as thieves and they're everywhere. But I've got him. And uh, you can just stay on them, stay with them. I've got videos where I have followed these things for what seems like a mile and a half, a continuous school of them. And uh, as you can see here, these are... Kind of little pockets of them. We're getting hit, we're getting hit, we're stopping. So uh, sometimes these fish will die off at dark too. That's another weird thing. You can catch them at night crappy fishing. Uh, a lot of people catch them. But uh, sometimes it'll die off right at dark for some reason. I think that probably has maybe more to do with what the bait's doing. Look at that one going there. Then what's happening with the light. I think maybe sometimes the bait pulls off these points when it gets dark. But... This time period right now, as you can see, that sun is setting behind me. When you find them, it can be golden. I'm gonna see how many we can get in the boat here. I don't know if that one's even still, yep. Feels like a bigger one or multiple ones. And I'm only in 14 feet of water here, guys. Uh, later on here in the winter, and that one hit a bear hook, guys. I only had one bait on here. That one hit a bear hook. Uh, when they get frenzied, that is not uncommon at all, especially if you're using any of the colored hooks, gold hooks, that kind of thing. It gives a little bit of shine and shimmer in the water. They'll hit it. So this is as fun as it gets. Uh, fishing is fun. Catching is even funner. Funner. That's a word. Look it up. Said I am milking these minnows out at this point. Oh my god, there. Still there. Got the boat barely moving through here. Just, uh. And that one flipped in the gear. Boom. I got a feeling. Let's try something. Let's see if I can get some on some bear hooks. I'm going to get this one off of here. Two bear hooks. I'm going to see if I can jig one with just that. That's asking a lot. I got one on this other rod going. Let's see if we can jig one with just that. You really got to have one hungry to eat that. No takers. No takers. 
Maybe if I was trolling, it would work. Let's see if this fish is still on here. I doubt it is. Nope. He finally gave up on that. Let's go back and put a bait on this other one and actually try to catch him with some bait now. I quit clicking. I was clicking my first view. I thought we might have a nice little slow kind of a uh, stroll walk in the park kind of day. And uh, once I got all frenzied up here, I quit clicking. I know, I don't know how many I got in there now. Y'all can go back and count. Those who really watch the videos hard, tell me how many I caught in the comments. So I got a comment section now. People can actually leave comments. It's great. Thank you, YouTube. Oh, no thank you to Mr. Purse because you just got away. Boom, got him. Got him that time. That feels like a better fish. Let's see what we got here. Stay out of my line, stay out of my line. There we go. He was just a little more eager to get away. Bam, look at that. These are fun, guys. These are fun. These are fun. This is like, uh, from what people have told me, I never fished for them in the glory days, but it's like the glory days of skipjack fishing what people said you could just catch them one right after another those days are gone boom oh he got away here fishy 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 we have got a tank full now I ain't gonna say we got bait for days, but we got bait for a couple days. I'm also gonna know where these fish are. I can come back here and hopefully get them. Boom, deuces. Remember guys, that one only had one bait on it. Uh, this is the other one that was down there. It shows you sometimes they'll hit the one with the bait and then the other one sees them chasing something and it just hits. There they go on top of the water. I don't know if you can see that. Turn the camera around there. Big school of bait getting pushed on top of the water. Fun fishing, fun fishing. That one's got a fish on it. Let me get this on here. Like I said, little bitty octopus hooks snailed on there. A small three quarter ounce sinker on the bottom. I think that one finally wiggled its way off. Not surprised, I let it flail around forever. My boat back toward where I had them at earlier. Let's see if we can get on a few more here. Got a pile of bait in there. No limit on these fish in this lake. Uh, you can catch and keep as many as you want in any size. Uh, while I, I, I don't think any fish is incapable of being overfished. I will say this, I think white perch can take a beating and handle a beating as far as when it comes to getting caught. Uh, these fish are very resilient. Uh, they do very good spawning in these lakes. Uh, the recruitment is very high on these fish and uh, they survive. That's a big crappie. Nice, nice. Bonus, bonus, crappie, crappy. I'm talking to so many people out of state that say crappie. I've gotten away from what I grew up on, and that was calling them crappy, crappy, crappy bait. Look at that rod going, whatever you want to call it. We'll take them. Chook. See if that one stayed buttoned. We will take them. A lot of fish out here on this point. <clears throat> a crappie, we do have a limit. We can use them as bait in North Carolina, but they have to meet the length and creel limit. So what I mean by that is you can keep 20 of them, but you can't have more than that on your boat. And they have to be eight inches long so you have to make sure your fish are eight inches long. So, other than that, you can use them for bait. Go 300 yards that way into South Carolina, which I'm right on the North Carolina, South Carolina line. It's illegal to use them. So, um, 
know your laws is what I'm getting at. They vary, vary state by state, and they vary on this lake because it's a border lake. So uh, a lot of you guys in other parts of the country can't use them. And uh, that's, uh, that's cool. Uh, different lakes, different ecosystems, different, uh, you know, just different, different things for different fish. So we can use them. I keep them. Uh, depends how many I catch on whether I'm using them for bait or using them to eat. Uh, using them to eat, using them for dinner. So, what we got here, see if we got a few more. About to run out of daylight. And I'm telling you, this is fishing and catching at its finest. Almost winter, the last little part of fall, late November, November 30th. Uh, the calendar says December 21st, I believe, for winter. I always define winter by the meteorological winter, and that's December 1st. So we're into winter fishing here. Our water temps are 53. So it's uh, cool water. Not what I consider cold water. It's cool water. It's chilly water. Uh, but still very fishable for catfish, crappie, perch. Uh, any of those fish, you can still catch them. A little bit tougher for flatheads. Uh, they can still be caught, but they are a lot more elusive when temperatures get down to where they're at. So this is all bait for blues. We'll be blue fishing uh, the rest of the winter, trying to put some of those in the boat and uh, hoping for a good winter. The thing that's been interesting this fall is we have had very stable lake levels and water flows we've had none of the flooding <clears throat> that we sometimes get in the fall with uh tropical storms coming through uh it's very dry as a matter of fact we're under a burning ban right now uh because of uh very dry conditions and also very low humidity so it's uh it's gonna be interesting oh I missed that one it's gonna be interesting what happens this fall uh going into winter with the fishing i'm hoping these stable temps make the fishing a little more predictable, patternable. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna, be out, I'm gonna be out there swinging for them anyway. So, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. That's what this one is. That one's dodging all over the place. Here we go. Amazing the difference. If you watch the first part of this video, the struggle to catch fish and fish popping off and not real good bites. And then we come in here and it's just a mat, it's just really just one fish after another. Still fish underneath me, I'm trying to keep an eye on the area I'm in. That one's still got a bait. You can imagine how good this fishing would be if you had a couple people on here. I wish I had Grayson out here with me. He was knocking out schoolwork. He's trying to get caught up from some of his school stuff from all his deer hunting. So he uh, got that. There goes that one there. I'm knocking around. I'm reusing these minnows at this point. Uh, he's knocking that out. If I'd have had him on here, we would have been done. I'm about. Oh, that one popped off right at the boat. It's the first one I've lost. That's interesting. Just cleaned out my bait tank at home. May put out a little video talking about that and a little bit of stuff to keep in mind. Uh, I do need to add some salt to it. Put a message in the comment section telling me to put salt in my bait tank. I need to get some. I think I'm out. Uh, <laughs> but bait tank's up in Craig. And the great thing about these baits is... I can literally put these things in there and while I go through a bunch of them in the winter, uh, they'll be there in February. Uh, these these fish in these cooler temperatures just, they'll live for months. So it makes, uh, it makes keeping bait very, very easy. So bam. Oh, looks like the sun's below the trees. What a day, what a, what a day of catching. Still ain't over. Got doubled up rods here. It is not over. But man. 
usually every one of my returns to the lake, and this is the first time in a couple months, every year it starts out with a perch fishing trip. And uh, that's to fill up the bait tank because I empty out the bait tank at home uh, during deer season. And uh, it always starts with the trip back to go catch bait. That's what we're doing today. And this one, yep, he's there, is not disappointing at all. Another fish. Not a fish. Getting back in the water. This has been, I'm sitting here looking at my camera while I'm taping this. This has been 22 minutes so far of continuous fish catching. Uh, I think it's up to 23 now. This is, this is as good as it gets fishing wise. I'm probably gonna let this entire section run in its entirety. So you kind of will have gotten to see all this stuff. I've got three cameras. I got this one, I got this one here, and I got that one over there. So kind of give you some different angles and some different takes on all this, but when it's good, it's good. Uh, I will tell you this, there are days when you cannot find these things and it baffles your mind after catching them like this. Uh, I had somebody message me the other day you know, I told them, hey, I ain't been out on the water, so I can't give you a whole lot of advice, but they were asking where the perch were. And I said, I ain't been. I said, now where I would be is deeper river channel ledges. Uh, I've caught a lot of them there this time of the year. That is not where they're at today. Uh, some of the intel and stuff I had heard uh, last week, the week before, was there were fishing creeks, and I believe that because there was probably still a lot of threadfin shad in there. Today, there wasn't as much. Uh, apparently that wasn't a big secret because there were several boats in those creeks fishing today. So, but stuff changes, bait moves, fish move, water temperatures stay down, a lot of variables this time of year and what, you know, puts fish where they're at. So you kind of have to adapt until things stabilize. And honestly, it's that way all the time. You have to, you know, what works this week may not work next week. So I almost feel bad telling people, you know, hey, go here, because then they go try fishing those places and they don't catch any fish and they think I'm lying to them. But if you've ever been on a guide trip with me, you'll know that. Uh, we'll <laughs> get out there and something will be working, especially this summer. It was like there was trip after, you know, we'd catch a fish, we'd catch good fish, we'd go back the next day, they wouldn't be there. Go to another place, you catch them, you're like, all right, I got them dialed in. You go to that place the next day, they're not there. So that's fishing. That's the way it works. So you fish when you can, you fish hard, you enjoy it, you enjoy the experience, and uh, just have a good time. It's good to be back on the water. It's, uh, you almost do forget it after being gone for, you know, a couple of months deer hunting. I love being in the woods. I love the sunrise and the sunsets in the woods. I saw deer today. I was fishing up in that creek and I saw deer up on the bank. I still got my deer eyes on, but uh, it's good to be out here. I love this place in the winter. It's nothing but fishermen and a few fools out here riding around. So it's, uh, it's a good time to be out. So with that sun setting, I'm gonna take these fish to the house and I appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you out on the water. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're gonna like. I'd watch that one, and then that one. No, no do, do that one first, and then that one. I, I don't know, just watch them both, they're both good.